open to the air. You can see the rivers, some of the most famous rivers in Scotland here, the Spey, the Tay. That's where we are, actually. And, of course, on the rivers, there's a whole multitude of really beautiful wildlife, including what we saw... <laughs> whoops! <laughs> including what we saw a little bit earlier, those beautiful gusanders and their chicks. Now, I've got to keep my voice down. Why are we here? Well, we're here because we're hoping to bring you live shots of beavers during the show. Now, if you look over there, I don't know if you can see, there's a sort of a, a clump of wood with willow over the top of it. Believe it or not, that's a beaver lodge, and we know there are beavers inside that. Now, beavers, fascinating animals. Uh, the family group, they've got sort of two or three uh, adults and maybe two youngsters, kits in there as well. Now, let's look at the beavers in a little bit more detail. OK, here are the beavers. Now, beavers are very nervous when they're out of water, so they tend to be always by the water, and they're forever feeding. They have a very poor digestive system, very difficult to absorb food, so they eat and eat and eat. Now, they're very vulnerable when they're out of the water. Lots of predators will have a go at them, foxes, and the kits can be taken by owls, uh, even by pike under the water, the kits, the youngsters. Now, what they do is they'll take the, the food across to, their, to the lodge and then they'll dive down with it. They don't feed outside, it's too dangerous. There it goes. And it goes into the lodge and they have a special feeding area there. OK, we've got a live camera. Let's go to the live camera now. It's fixed on the lodge there. Can we see anything? No, nothing there at the moment. But uh, we'll keep watching. It's very, very difficult, that, because they, when they come out of the lodge, often they'll just dive and they'll go miles down river. So the cameraman who's on that camera's got a difficult job. OK, critical point. Beavers are not invasive species. These are indigenous animals. They were here in Britain for thousands of years, but we made them extinct about 400 years ago. So that's a crucial point. Look at this. And look, down here, there is sign, beaver sign, absolutely everywhere. See, they've taken this tree down, taken this one down, taken... And they can take a really big tree down. They tend to do it alongside the river, and there are stumps all the way down here. Now, how do they do it? It's fascinating. What they tend to do is, one beaver will have one tree. It's like its project. And it will start cutting, biting here, at about an angle of 135 degrees to the vertical there. Then it turns its head upside down and it bites at 45 degrees, almost exactly the same angle all the way through. And then it rotates itself all the way round until the tree falls down. And they stop about every 10 minutes when they're biting to have a rest and sharpen their teeth. They keep their teeth razor sharp. OK, now, apart from chopping down trees, what else do beavers do? Well, of course, they're renowned for building dams. And a few days ago, I went out with Bob Smith to go and have a look at the bee beavers' fine engineering abilities, just a few miles from where I'm standing now. I just saw a frog. Oh, there it is. is. See, yep. There he goes. There he goes. Well spotted. Frog so. there. Yeah. yeah. And the, I think there's even fish rising in there's here. Fish, yeah. You see them in the big pond down here. Yeah. So uh, there's an awful lot of things benefiting from this work. Yeah, aren't exactly. There? So you see here, Martin, another beautiful little pond. Beautiful in this light, actually. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Yeah. A lot of insects moving here as well. Yeah. But you can see here the, the amount of materials that they're using to, to build the dam. So as you see here. They've been carrying this decent stone, big bit of granite there. How on earth does a beaver carry something that size and weight? We we'll can't put it in its mouth. No, it'll use it with its four paws. They carry it like they'll that. Carry it like that, and so they just waddle up. They've got to be on their back it. feet. Yeah, yeah, like that. And they'll push it or roll it up. And as you can hear, you've got that beautiful little trickle. The beavers will come along and see this, and think, "Oh my God, there's water escaping." And of course, this is their environment that they feel safe and secure in. So they'll see that, and then they'll start pushing more of this mud up right. to dam that up stop the water escaping. So if they hear deeper. the sound of the water at night, that's a cue for them to come in exactly. and start building. Not there. just hearing, feeling. 
because they can feel they can feel running water right, on their guard okay. hairs. Yeah, so they'll pick that that motion up, yeah. um, and all we'll the stuff. That's that a up. stimulus. Yeah. And these here, that's actual beaver. You can actually see the footprints. Yeah, just in yeah. here. There's a couple of other wee ones there as well. But, yeah. So what they'd be doing there is they'd be on the other side, and they'd just be pushing, More pushing than likely on the other side, pushing up, pushing or they could up. actually come to this side and pull it. I mean, Bob, looking up here at all this, this is a work of what a dozen beavers. I mean, how many would it take to? Probably four. Keep There's four beavers know. doing all yeah. this. Well, they're incredible animals. We they're could incredible learn a lesson animals. from beavers, couldn't we? We certainly About could. industry and yeah. hard work. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing engineers, extraordinary. They put up a dam 1.5 metres long in a single night. Now, just to remind you, we've got a camera over there on that lodge, the Beaver Lodge. Let's go live to that camera now. Can we see anything? No, we can't see anything. There's nothing there. But just, be just before we came on air, we did see some activity, so we know they're there. Let's have a look at what we saw. There it was. We know they're there. And there were two, actually, there were two beavers just diving around there. But the trouble is that a beaver can hold its breath for 15 seconds and they can swim for 800 metres underwater in a single hit. So we've got a little bit of a job, but we'll try to get you live beavers during the show. OK, let's go back north of the border for our intrepid explorer, Martin Hughes Games, who really likes a challenge. He's trying to see live one of Britain's most secretive animals in the wild. We are, Chris, we absolutely are. And uh, I'm up in Scotland and the beavers are here and it's incredibly frustrating because we keep seeing little bits of ripples coming out and I've heard two slaps like that, which could be beaver. When they're distressed or alarmed, they slap their tails to warm other be warn other beavers. But um, nothing as yet, but we know that they're here. It's slightly frustrating. But last night we came up here and I stayed out till about two o'clock in the morning with my camera. Of course, I didn't really. The camera team did, and they managed to see this. Sure enough, almost exactly this time of the evening, there was a beaver. That's the one here. We think there are possibly two adults, two kits, and there might even be another two. What they do is they have two kits from the year before, and then this year's all living in the same lodge. Again, moving that food around, keeping the water, and it's dived down, and we take that into the lodge, so that it can, it can feed undisturbed in there. But fascinatingly, they've got this adaptation that as soon as their nose touches the water, their eyes, their, sorry, their nostrils and their ears, nostrils shut tight and their ears clamp down so that they don't get any water at all into their bodies. Now, I think that one was probably going up to look for a little bit of food maybe on the bank. Anyway, we waited then we got our thermal camera out and carried on trying to find the beavers right here on the stretch of the river and we managed to see them. Now again, here they are, you can see just that, that warm dot, that's a beaver. You can almost see it glowing in the water, it leaves a little trail of warmer water behind it. Less nervous now, they'll come out onto the bank to look for food. But very, very nervous. Look at that huge tail. It's a fat reserve, that tail, with strong tendons in it, and the muscles are near its bottom, and they can, if it's really frightened and wants to move fast, it'll use its tail to power through the water. It's going up now. We think it's going to look for food. It'll use those super powerful teeth to chop down some tasty bit of probably something like aspen or willow. They're very choosy in the trees that they like to eat. They don't eat conifers, curiously, don't tend to. Here it is, yes, it's got something. Bringing it down into the water again, it won't eat outside, too dangerous. They're superbly adapted to being in the water and it'll take that back to the lodge and they'll all feed together. Very big, they're huge animals. They're the second biggest rodent in the world. The capybara is the biggest, but a, a, a beaver can get up to about 38 kilograms. Normally they're 18 kilograms, or 1.3 metres long, so they're a very big animal. OK, beavers. Are they a good thing or a bad thing? Now, that's a controversial question. 
The Scottish Beaver trial went on for years. They reported back to the government in May 2015. They said that beavers can provide increased groundwater storage, flood protection, and add to people's enjoyment of the environment. They also have a very positive influence on biodiversity, which is great. The NFU, the National Farmers Union, have got concerns. Some landowners have complained that beavers have damaged commercial fields, forests and fields. But anyway, beavers will become a European protected species later this year, according to the Scottish Government. But beavers have been and they are being shot now by very worried landowners legally um, because they want to shoot them, get rid of as many as they can before they are protected. But beavers are not just here in Scotland. Let's look at this. OK, that's where we are now. There's more beavers over there. And down here in Devon, there's a good project going that um, I was actually involved with uh, releasing the first ones two years ago. And uh, since then, uh, they've added another two beavers to that project to increase the genetic diversity. And uh, that was this year. Uh, that's, uh, there's about 20 individuals actually now in the river. And it's all thanks to Mark Elliott, the Devon Wildlife Trust, who's been the driving force behind this. I touched this one and it gave me a good old splash in the face <laughs> as, it, as it went. OK, but there's also beavers in Wales and there's a fascinating project down here in Cornwall where the local wildlife trust are cooperating with a farmer to try to see if the beavers can stop flooding on the village of Laddock, which is very flood prone. That would be fascinating to see if they can help. Anyway, from one watery world to a miniature watery world.